He's so good to all of us. We do want to honor the mothers today and all you mothers that perhaps um, don't have you all your children with you anymore. Our heart goes out to you and to all of you that have lost your mothers and myself. Uh, we heart goes out to you and also. And we're glad to have Vina Margaret Emmons with us today. She missed a couple of Sundays because she's been sick, but she's back with us today. <clears throat> That would be my kid's mother. <laughs> Vina Margaret. Did you all know that's her name? Vina Margaret. That's a beautiful name, but we call her Midge. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, that's an old name, I guess. We do appreciate all of you. And we got a gift for the mothers today. Yeah, we got a gift for you. Just wait and see what you drive out of here in. Probably what you drove in in. <laughs> Chastity Walker, we're so glad to have you. God bless you. Hope you see something here today you like. If you look at me real good, I know you will. <laughs> we'll be brief this morning because I know we're going to give out the flowers and honor the mothers and all. If you have your Bibles with me this morning, and we'll turn to the first book of Samuel. It's probably up on the screen. First verse and 11th and 12th, first chapter, 11th and 12th verses. <clears throat> and she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the, on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me, and forget, thine ha forget not thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life. And there shall no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass that she continued praying before the Lord that Eli marked her mouth. <clears throat> I read an extra verse. This was a woman that loved God. She was a woman that was married to a man named Elkanah. And her name was Hannah. <clears throat> a woman that was desiring a child. And that is something that God instilled in the women, that you desire a child. Most of you here uh, know what I'm talking about, because I know I've heard women talk and so on, and they wanted a child. Some were disappointed for a while and so on, and then the Lord blessed them with a child. I've got a nephew who's been married for several years, and he's probably close to 50 years old, I don't know, up in his 40s. And they had no children. But about a month ago, they found out they're going to have twins. And so God blessed them double. <clears throat> so don't give up. Uh, Abraham didn't. And sent him uh, sending twins to them. Now back in the day when our children were born, it's like the fellow said, it was kind of like a box of chocolates. You didn't know what you was going to get. Now they've got ultrasounds and all these things. And you know what they are before they get here. But I don't know what good that does because you ain't going to change it. <laughs> it's a boy, it's going to be a boy. It's a girl, it's going to be a boy, a girl. But most people, here's what I hear all the time. And I thank God for this thought. And that is, whatever it is, I just pray to God it'll be healthy. And that is the greatest prayer you can pray for that little baby that hadn't been born yet. That it'll be healthy. This lady, she was special. Now, her husband had two wives, and when he'd come to give out the gifts in giving time, he always gave Hannah a little bit more, because the Bible says he loved Hannah. Now, this was a day in which God was replenishing the earth. Things were different. The laws had not been come yet, the Ten Commandments, and a man could have two wives, and so on, and so forth. But don't be doing that today, or they'll put you in jail. And anyway, it's not right in the sight of God. But that's the way it was in those days. And so, but she didn't have a child. And she told her husband, it just bothered her all the time. And he said he didn't understand. Now, women, there's one thing you're going to find out about us men. There's going to be a lot of things about us that you don't understand. And then, more so, women, uh, men, there's going to be a lot of things about women you're never going to understand. But as long as you love them 
and long as you love each other, all that part you don't understand will take care of itself and God will work it out. And you can have a happy family, happy children, and a great God if you just dedicate them to the Lord and before they're born and dedicate them to the Lord after they get here and just live for the Lord. And he said, you've got me. Now see, he came up about like I do sometimes. Somebody said, well, you're going to get your wife for Christmas. I said, she's got me. What else could she need? <laughs> you know, but that's about the way her husband was. Said, you've got me a you know, fine husband. I give you everything. But you know what? You can give a woman everything in the world, but that married woman most likely desires the child. And so we might not always understand that, but that's the way it is. And so she's desired this child, but not selfishly did she desire the child, but she desired the child that she may give it to the Lord. I thank God this morning for mothers that love the Lord enough before that child is even born that you say, Lord, I want you to take this child I want to put it in your hands. I want to give it to you. And I hope that he grows up to be some great worker in the house of God, in the church of God, and in the field of evangelism or whatever. He will grow up to be a great singer. They'll grow up to be a great person where that they will live for you for all the days of their life. And that would be the greatest gift, Lord, that you could give this child that's about to come into the world. Because they're coming into a world today, they're certainly going to need God. They're coming into a world today who doesn't know God. They're coming into a world today where they're going to be taught everything except God. And they're going to come into a world that persecutes God. It doesn't make any difference if you got religion. It doesn't matter if you belong to some sect. It doesn't matter if you got some outfit you go to, but brother, when you say, I've got a child and I brought him up in the name of Jesus Christ, the son of a living God, people are gonna frown on you like a cloudy day because my God is being criticized and because his name is Jesus more than any name upon the face of the earth. They'll criticize people, but no one gets more criticism today than Jesus Christ the King of kings and the Lord of lords. In turn, I think the people of God should not give anything any more praise today than what they give to the God of heaven and the God of earth and the God of yesterday, the God of today and the God of tomorrow and the God of all eternity because our God is the one that can take our children and bring them up in the fashion that they should be and they will love him all the days of their life. And then when this life is over, it's ended and the darkness has set in and the sun shines no more. Thank God they're in the beauty of an eternal light, which is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That's what this woman was. She was a woman of God. She wanted a child so bad that she wanted to go up and see Eli the priest. Well, her husband said, I don't understand this. It's not the full moon. It's not time to go up and so on and so forth. But nevertheless, she said, I'm going. And so she got up and went up to the temple. She wasn't supposed to be there. And when she came to the temple, they wondered why. And, would, when, and that's the way it was. They would stop them because it wasn't the time to see the priest.